Okay, uh, I don't have a slideshow. Uh, my slides are a public website. So uh, I uh, encourage all of you to go to this website here and uh, read while I'm talking and click maybe jump ahead if you're bored. As said, I'm a uh, designer, artist, and activist, and I have a couple of disclaimers. This is a talk about uh, legal issues, but I'm not a lawyer. Uh, this, so this is no legal advice, but I gave my best to really figure out how this is right. Then uh, disclaimer two, different countries have different laws, uh, but the, what I'm going to explain here should match the legal situation here in Germany and uh, Europe and probably a lot of uh, parts of the world too. Then disclaimer three, this is just a fraction of uh, the complex problem of licensing open hardware. Uh, of course, I, need a, I had to pick uh, something to focus on here. Okay, let's start. Um, and I start with a statement, and that is uh, licensing open source hardware is really messy and it's broken, at least compared uh, to software. From my point of view, the world of software looks just amazingly organized. And the reason for this is that uh, software is governed by copyright law, as probably all of you know. Um, like works of art and images. Uh, and this makes everything somehow very simple because Copyright is something you receive automatically the moment you create something. And this means that software is born closed. Uh, but this makes the situation very clear from the beginning. You know if you see a piece of software, it's closed. You have to find someone who owns it. And this someone needs to become active to open it. And there's a simple standard way. Just pick one of the many existing ready-to-use open source licenses or maybe a Creative Commons license because all of these licenses are copyright based. And then they make a statement of what you uh, allow others to do with your work under the conditions uh, you want them to fulfill. But here is uh, where we enter the realm of hardware. We enter the realm of functionalities. And where functionality start, copyright automatically ends. So copyright explicitly does not apply to anything that has to do with functionalities. And this, of course, also means that copyright-based licenses don't apply to hardware. And the simple uh, story here is, uh, imagine you write a book about a time machine, then the book the novel is protected by copyright law, but the machine you describe in the book is not. Everyone can build it, uh, unless you have a patent uh, or design rights registered, of course. We still need copyright-based licenses for the, uh, in an open source hardware, but only for the documentation, so, so the source, uh, for example, the uh, description or images, how-tos, and so on. But it really needs to be clear that these licenses, usually Creative Commons licenses, uh, don't say anything about the hardware itself, just about the design files. Um, so um, the thing with patents is that they are really fundamentally different from copyright. The key difference is um, that all hardware is born free. You don't receive a patent automatically. You have to become active to get it and to close the hardware. And this comes first with costs, why copyright was for free, and you can only patent ideas that are new. So you can't patent anything that is already known to the public, that is already prior art. While you can remix classic ideas uh, in software or uh, in novels and so on. So this is really important to understand. Hardware is born free. Uh, so the question is then how to tackle the legal side of it. And the answer is very easy, just do nothing. Except publish your uh, work very prominently for example, on the web. With this, it becomes prior art, it goes into the commons, and no one, including yourself, can close it anymore, forever. Um, but this, of course, also means that you then can't tell others what they can do with your uh, work. You have no way to govern uh, what they do, uh, how they use it, and what they give back, for example. Uh, theoretically, yes, you could, if you have an invention that is new, you could file a patent, then you get exclusive rights, and then you could create a public license that allows everyone to use your invention under the conditions of your choice. But does it make sense to invest a lot of money to then open it up again? No, it doesn't. So again, it's easy, publish it and do nothing else. And then embrace the fact that no one, including yourself, can dictate to anyone if and how the hardware is used. 
But the truth is, this doesn't seem easy for people to accept and therefore to understand. I will get to this in a moment. I would just mention that um, here in Europe, in Germany, and I think in the US too, uh, we have more forms of property rights that apply to hardware. For example, uh, design rights that protect a little bit how something looks or utility rights um, or models uh, that protect how something works. It's basically just the smaller version, the cheaper version, but also weaker of a patent. Um, both of these uh, property rights are closer to the patent because you also don't receive them automatically. You have to become active to file them. And uh, it only works if what you want to uh, protect is new. So it's the fact remains, star uh, hardware is still born free. Um, if you want to learn more about this, uh, other rights, uh, just click uh, here. Uh, uh, there's a full lecture on the whole situation. So to sum it up, again, mention it one more time, making hardware open, it's really easy um, from a legal point of view. Just publish it and do nothing else. And of course, use a copyright-based license to share your editable documentation or design files to make e proper open source hardware uh, and make it easy for others then to build upon your work. So, but how to deal then with the fact that you can tell others what they can do with your design and what not, that there is no copy left, for example, and the answer is simply live with it and design your business strategy accordingly, you know? If people would understand that, we would have a really healthy open hardware licensing situation. The problem is most people don't. For people, this is not easy to understand uh, and accept. They, they just don't like it. I think it just doesn't click. Instead, you find a lot of really, really weird things out there that make the situation heavily broken. And I uh, want to show you two issues. First, uh, people think they can use a copyright-based license for their hardware ideas. And they even use copyright-based licenses with a non-commercial clause and then call their work open source. There are a lot of prominent examples that do this. OK, uh, let me just uh, show you a little bit what's going on there. I think if you're interested in hardware and making, you have probably seen this yourself, that people use copyright-based licenses next to their hardware in a way that creates the impression that this license is actually protecting the hardware. And usually they are under the impressions in uh, themselves. And you find this even on so-called maker platforms that no, should know better. I'll show you uh, an example here on Instructables, which is a very old platform for this. Here you see a simple hardware project. And look up here in the corner. There's a Creative Commons license. And if you click on this, then you see just the text of the license. No explanation what this license basically is for. Uh, here's another example from a, an upcoming uh, maker platform called Wikifactory. And here you see the same issue. Come on, please load. Yes. Uh, here is a drone. And up here, you see there is a license, uh, also a Creative Commons license. And if you click on this again, you will find an, an explanation of the license, but not an explanation what this licensee actually uh, is for or talks about. So tell me, as an outsider without any knowledge, would you have thought that these designs I, uh, I just showed you are protected by these licenses? How would you have interpreted this? I think most people think, yes, of course, the license applies to the uh, shown uh, project. But um, yeah, and so people, when they upload something on Instructables, they will think that their invention is protected with this license, but it is not. And I looked around at the Instructables website, and I found only one source uh, where they actually explain that this license is just about documentation and not about the hardware itself. And um, I show you this article. Um, and this information is here in the last part of the article. The article is 11 years old and had only 716 views in 11 years. So it's basically hidden, you know. Um, and this is really, really a problem uh, because it creates false expectations among content creators and more importantly, it fosters false motivations. People do not really understand how sharing design, hardware design solutions on the web really works and how the law supports it. Actually, how the law supports it is quite good. It's basically 
pretty much in favor of open source hardware, but people don't understand this. And this means that the collaborative potential is uh, locked to a big extent. Uh, and I really think that these platforms need to be fixed. Uh, they need to communicate very clearly to their content creators and the audience that these licenses is about, are about documentation. And everyone who's on that platform should really understand that if they put something there, it becomes free hardware. Everyone can make with it whatever they want to, unless, of course, they have a, a patent or design rights filed up front, uh, or the design is some kind of artwork. Yeah, so uh, maybe just one idea, the platform should write something like, this documentation is shared under a Creative Commons license, the hardware it's itself is not, and then put an explanation there. So that really the, the public and content creator creators gets, um, get educated about the situation. And here's an even worse problem. It's a um, highly problematic form of the thing above. You very often in the world of hardware and making see something like this. This is a screenshot from a company that shares something as, as a table as open source under a Creative Commons non-commercial license. <clears throat> So people publish their work as open source under a non-commercial license. This is wrong on so many levels. And uh, the problem is that those levels start to interact with each other, which then creates really bizarre and harmful effects. Um, to tackle this, I created a couple of months ago uh, with the help of others uh, an FHQ. And I just want to show you a little bit, uh, some parts of this FHQ to give you a little bit of, a, of an impression how big and weird of a problem this is. Of course, the uh, FHQ starts here with the explanation that uh, non-commercial is not open source and that all the uh, openness and open source definitions explicitly allow um, commercial use, also free uh, software. And then uh, I want to show you here um, question number seven. You could ask this uh, now also. I just explained to you why that Creative Commons licenses, because they are copyright-based, don't apply to hardware. What's the problem then? And the problem is that um, the law is no binary system. You know, um, Still can people uh, can sue you uh, and, and claiming that these, uh, the, the copyright, their Creative Commons license indeed does protect their hardware. And then it goes to court and there sits a judge and um, he has to make a, a decision and uh, part of the decision that the judge makes is to figure out which law actually applies. And there could be really weird situations where a Creative Commons license maybe still applies to your hardware. It's not very likely, but if you're, for example, an artist, it could work. But the problem is that you uh, have this legal risk that you have to go to court, and this takes a lot of time, energy, money, and who would want it? You know, uh, the Lego brick, for example, is a functionality. It had a patent and that patent expired. And then Lego tried for decades in courts to still protect it with other forms of property rights, for example, uh, with uh, three-dimensional trademarks. All of this failed, but it was uh, more than a decade of a, a fight in court. And who would want to go to court? You are right, but you know, who wants to spend this time? So it's a legal risk that you get sued, uh, and this legal risk is some kind of thin layer of protection. Who wants to uh, go to court if you, if you want to change the world or make uh, just a cool hardware project? And the second thing is that you enter asshole territory because the people misuse um, an, a Creative Commons license to signal, hey, I don't want you to use this uh, in, in any way, especially not commercially. You have all rights to do this, but if you do it, then maybe you will get a shitstorm because the public doesn't know that you have the right and that what you do is the right thing. Uh, they will think uh, you are an asshole. Uh, they will not understand. And there's a very prominent example here where MakerBot, who was uh, started as an open source company, and then they made a move who was uh, closing something. But this move was 100% legitimate. But the, the people just don't got it. And MakerBot uh, received a big shitstorm, unjustified. And here's a story about Corey, from uh, Cory Doctor who, who explains you this. So this is another uh, threat that is out there that you be, m might be seen uh, as an asshole while you are not. Um, so those two uh, things are basically a form of protection. And the second thing is uh, scope explosion. Yes. Um, 
remember that uh, a patent can only last for 25 years, while copyright law lasts up to 70 years. And if you now say, hey, copyright actually protects my hardware, you calmly try to extend uh, the, the, the time of protection for your hardware for more than 50 years. And you ex uh, extend the uh, uh, scope because you can get a patent just for things that are new. But copyright, as I told you, can apply to, uh, to also to remix of old ideas. And I want to show you here uh, one of the very really weird examples. There are uh, this is group. They make these X, Y, Z tables and bikes. And they, of course, make this strange move. Uh, it's open source under a non-commercial license. But what actually do they want to protect here? Is it that X, Y, Z connection? That's really all. Here's just one, uh, one example of more than 100 years ago, the famous Readfield chair used this X, Y, Z connection. Or is it that they use standard beams you can get in every hardware store? So there is no way they can protect this with, with our given law, but they misuse the Creative Commons license to pretend they uh, own this. And therefore, they take something that belongs to all of us and try to make it exclusively here, uh, theirs. So you can really steal with the misuse of the Creative Commons license from the commons. And yet those people call their projects open source. So, oops. Um, yeah. That's, I think, the proper reaction there. So, um, uh, yeah, these two problems are really heavy. So what to do about it? Um, and I thought maybe we could try uh, some collective action to clean the situation uh, and I, to fix it. So I created a campaign. I launched it this morning. And I would just want to show you a little bit uh, what it is. It's not very complex but you can maybe join it. Um, here the campaign, of course, uh, explains a little bit uh, what is the problem here. And then there are these um, little memes. No commercial is not open source. And here's then are the memes about the documentation. And maybe that helps. I think when uh, I entered this uh, world uh, 10 years ago, and if I had seen uh, a meme like that on the web, it would have made me think, and I would probably have uh, understood quite quickly what's going on here. Um, maybe. Uh, and here is uh, the proposal for the collective campaign. First of all, uh, the memes I just showed you, share them, uh, post them, send them. Whenever you see someone uh, uh, doing a wrong thing or uh, uh, aim uh, or trying to claim property rights for something they can claim property rights for using a Creative Commons license. Just calmly post one of these uh, 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 one of these uh, gifs or memes. Uh, maybe that would help. You can add an explanation or just post it without an explanation. I think this would work equally well. The second thing you could do. Um, I had the pleasure to work many years with the openness activist uh, Sam Muirhead. And he made a really bold move. Whenever he saw someone on the web posting something as open source using a non-commercial license, he just wrote them a personal email. This email was very friendly, but strong worded and very precise. Uh, he explains what the situation is and how to fix it. And uh, he told me usually with success. And I think let's all be brave like Sam. If you see a project like this, uh, Sam was uh, very um, cool. Uh, I asked him to share this. Um, email uh, on the web, and here it is. Uh, we can all uh, use it and copy it and send it to those projects and ask them, please change the license. Please stop to miseducate uh, the public about how open source works and what it actually is uh, for. Um, yeah, it's very well written. And then the, the third thing, maybe the biggest um, thing, but maybe the most promising lever, let's just all ask uh, the platforms. Um, send them uh, an email and ask them please change your communication maybe put it to turn it to something like uh, this uh, this documentation is shared under a creative commons license but this license does not apply to the documentation but usually uh, and not to the documented project is itself and then have a little info link and really educate everyone what's the situation and that the stuff on the platform is probably free hardware and we all can explore it commercially, build upon it freely. And this is a great thing and they should really uh, embrace this. Uh, if you want to send this email, it would be awesome. Uh, I also created an email template. Uh, I can't write as that well, uh, uh, as good as Sam Urhead. Uh, so maybe you have to um, 
rewrite my little email here, uh, but you can also use it as, as is. Uh, and I think if a couple of us maybe send this email, maybe they start uh, thinking and change this communication. I think this could change really, really, really a lot. Okay, mm. cool. Then, um, uh, rip, yeah. Just a little uh, reminder, if we did this, the campaign successfully, uh, the problem, some parts of the problems would be solved, but not everything. Um, but it would be an important um, step. I just want to uh, remind you that I explained about that the problem is that in software, the situation is always clear. There is copyright and there is a standard way to deal with it and make it open. So open source software licenses. You see a piece of software, you know uh, there's a way to figure out the intention of the creators, you find a license or not, and then you're good to go. The problem with hardware is that uh, it's not clear if there are any property, property rights at all. And if, there's, uh, if there are some filed, which one? You just can't know if this is free or has, uh, someone has a patent or a, a design rights, unless you uh, spend a lot of time uh, researching uh, this. So, and even if it would be free or if it would be closed, there is just no standard way to signal to the outside world what is the case. So you have no way to figure out what's the situation. Is this a free, uh, free software? And as a creator of free hardware, and as a creator of free hardware, you have no standard way to signal to people, hey, this is really free hardware. I never filed a patent. I will never file design rights. You can do with it whatever you like. Please do. Um, and I think this is uh, something we could we should discuss in the open source hardware community. Uh, what should could be a standard way? Maybe there's a standard way I'm not aware of. Uh, but yeah, how standard can it be when I'm not uh, really aware of? I just show you how we do this with our little uh, design studio. Uh, we created uh, this uh, public promise, which is a little bit uh, like a like a license. Of course, not checked by a lawyer. But in this public promise, uh, we just explain that we will never ever uh, will uh, file a patent, which would not work for our stuff anyway. And we will never make use of our design rights in what way. And that we want this um, uh, statement to be legally binding for us. So this is our way to give people the freedom. Hey, there's this is really open, and we want you to do with it whatever you see fit. And we put this. Uh, a public promise on design rights uh, below here next to our Creative Commons license, which of course applies to all our articles and the documentation of our hardware and campaign projects and so on. Um, yeah, but is this a way, is this a, an idea for a standard way? I'm not sure. I mean, it's just a, how we do this, but maybe this, uh, there could be a fruitful discussion. Yeah, thank you uh, for listening. And I just want to uh, highlight one more time why this is important. Uh, open hardware could really be a super important and fantastic tool to deal with the challenges that we'll, uh, we will have to face in the future. Climate change, biodiversity collapse, uh, resource exhaustion. We need uh, open hardware could really help with it. But open hardware is really uh, not enabled to grow. And one of the big reasons is that there are these weird misunderstandings uh, about the licensing, about the legal situation. Unless this is fixed, uh, open hardware uh, cannot really uh, make huge uh, next steps. You can argue that uh, the whole uh, free software and open source software uh, movement started with this uh, legal hack of the of the uh, new public license. That it started from a legal situation, and uh, there is no similar situation here in hardware. And this is um, yeah, really a problem. And I think this is a, a, an interesting lever if we want to push uh, open hardware forward. Thank you for your uh, attention. Please. Join the campaign if you like it. Uh, let's do something. Let's clean up the web and uh, move towards a better world. Thank you, Lars. What an inspiring end point, uh, uh, point to finish on. Thank you. And uh, we have one question so far already for Lars. Uh, don't be shy. I'm going to point where I think the chat box may be, which is there if I'm mirrored and there if I'm not mirrored. And uh, my first question then uh, to you, Lars, comes from Sriram which is about the Open Web Foundation licenses, which are designed specifically for open hardware, apparently. Do you recognize these licenses as being valid in, in your case? And if not, why not? I must say uh, that uh, actually I might, might have been an educational holder. I don't know these licenses. But um, if they are copyright-based, uh, which is 
I don't know them, but it's probably the case that they are copyright based. Um, then they, it's the same with the Creative Commons licenses. There's also the CERN open hardware uh, license. There are licenses that are made for uh, open hardware, but they're all, if you really read them carefully, are made for the copyrighted parts, so for the design files, but not for the hardware itself. And this confusion, confusion is really something we need to um, tackle. Interesting. And a question from me then. You said that making your hardware open requires doing nothing except publishing it in public. But what does that mean if you don't have uh, digitized artifacts already like CAD files or, or similar, similar documents? How can, you, how can you do that effectively so it's in the Commons? I mean, uh, when you can post it on Facebook, post it in a Facebook group about, um, uh, about hardware and making, post it on Twitter, you know, just make sure that it's relatively prominent because uh, if, you're, if you try to file a patent, there is someone and checks if this invention is already out there in the world. And um, now, nowadays the world is so complex that no one can really see every source and uh, maybe then your patent is, um, is granted, although it, uh, what you try to patent is already prior art. Uh, but then you will win in court if you can show, no, I really made this public uh, on, in this Facebook group uh, two years ago and so on. And uh, there, there, a lot of people are afraid that uh, large companies come and steal their ideas and then they patent it, uh, which uh, I have never heard of a case where this actually happens because it really doesn't make sense for a large company to do this, uh, mostly because they would lose in court and usually they are really uh, uh, well equipped with engineers. They can just recreate the idea in a little bit different way uh, instead of taking the legal risk there to, to go with you to court and lose it and then have a lot of damage to their uh, public appearance and so on. Thank you. So, so if there's no digital files, then uh, you might, I mean, is publishing photographs or a long description of the, the, the process, the me mechanical items, if it's not a printed circuit board or you don't have the files for that, uh, what's the minimum criteria to qualify as being published in the commons, would you say? I don't know. Everything you can uh, um, come up with to explain what your, your, your idea or your functionality is. I mean, some people say that uh, having an, a, a patent is uh, basically also an open source file, which is not the case because you can see a patent. It describes the functionality, but it will not often not help you to actually build the device. Um, but this also teaches us that a very minimal description of the mechanism uh, or your idea should uh, cover, cover you and really make it public. Was it clear? Yes, I think so. Thank you. So I'll follow up with another question. Um, yeah, so you mentioned the design and utility rights that uh, can augment the other kinds of rights and, and means of protecting the, the freedom of your open hardware. To what degree are those internationally in enforceable? I think you mentioned uh, they might be specific to Germany or, or how does that work? Yeah, I know that there in Europe there is this uh, design rights for things uh, that uh, how something looks and um, and and uh, as I said, I are, really didn't research how, for example, is the situation in Japan or in Mongolia, for example. But I'm pretty sure that this covers the situation in, in Europe, that we have this utility uh, models and this uh, design rights. Um, so throughout the European Union member states, we can be confident that we can fall back on those if we first apply for them and are granted them for our hardware projects? Pretty much. That's how, what, how I understood it, yeah. Great. And is there a way of requiring derivative works of open hardware projects to remain uh, in the commons, similar to how copyleft works with software? Yeah, and that's, that's the issue. No. No, there is not. And that's maybe the biggest problem people have. It's really, you can post something, then it's uh, open a functionality and someone can take your functionality and make a little extra invention on top that only works because there is uh, this space and then this person can close it for everyone, including yourself. Uh, but that's the way, there is no way, to, way around this. There is just no way to fix it. There's only one way to fix it. Uh, change your expectation, deal with the fact that this won't ever happen and then design your business strategy or your hardware strategy around this fact, live with it. Whatever we do is designed like this. We are happy, we know that we have no way to really um, put any conditions out there what people do with our stuff.
and and that's really the key message here we have to live with it and then start to de design the discussion and everything from there and that would be a fantastic point because it might look at the first oh okay then i lose my invention but it also means there are so many inventions you can use for free build on them you know you have so much freedom from this we all it's it's a it's a win for all of us but that's the thing that's so hard for people to understand i think so prior art gives you no defense in that case like can you it, it can be so iterative so minute an extension in the hardware field that uh another company can get a patent even if uh prior art exists for your your previous iteration of the work yes for example you are, uh let's say you have a, a nuts and bolts are prior art for for centuries now but still someone could come up with a new uh, way to have a, a to, to make the mechanism on top I just can't mm -hmm. find the word right now. They can patent this, of course. Then you have this specific form of nut or bolt uh, is then closed again. It's possible always, yeah. Mm -hmm. And look yeah. with it, that's the, the key message. I have another question for you then. Um, about the uh, legal recourse when, um, yeah, like you've mentioned a few different ways of reaching out to organizations who are claiming copyright covers. Uh, open hardware which in fact it doesn't is there any is there any alternative uh, any any more um, maybe for those organizations who don't reply like you seem to have experienced yourself because you've sent notices to some of those websites you shared earlier but they're still claiming uh, creative commons licenses for hardware files and so on is there any other recourse or any other option to to push or or uh, let's say coerce those organizations into uh, ceasing to claim something that isn't true about the licensing of their hardware uh yeah not that i know of i mean who wants to sue them or you know who, who wants to go there no i mean just uh, ask them politely and um that's what's so fantastic about this text by sam he told me that it usually worked you know not not always but it usually worked and maybe that's that's also maybe the experiment with these memes you know look at mm -hmm. these memes and what they try to subtle communicate maybe this also helps push people uh, uh across the edge and really makes our persuasion Great. Yeah.